starting the recording. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, just uh, whenever you have doubt, let's uh, just go through all uh, those previous two sessions for Git for all those commands, basic. So and then you will get uh, more idea. So today what we'll do, uh, we will conclude uh, the Git because we have spent a lot of time on Git already and. Uh, like we covered more than the basic actually, like, uh, so initially it was, it was, I planned but just for two hours, but we are spending a lot more time than two hours because we uh, did some advanced thing as well. So today also we'll cover uh, first hour, we'll uh, have more overview on like uh, some of the things that will you will require for the interview plus a uh, few things that you will have to do when you are actually working on the project how, how did these things work in an organization? For example, the branching strategies and uh, all those things. So the commands that I, uh, that I told you that are basic and that will be needed for every developer, every developer or every person who is using Git, who is actually creating the branches and uh, doing all the merging, con resolving conflicts. So those commands are important for those. Okay, so today we'll cover a few things uh, a bit advanced okay so yeah i'm sharing uh, this slide so uh, in this ppt i'll forward you this ppt which we were discussing earlier so i have attached a cheat sheet a git cheat sheet so here it will list you all the commands like all the commands uh, we have which we have discussed plus some additional additional commands as well you can search them on google as well because there are many cheat sheet cheat sheets for a uh, git available okay uh, so those will do, that will contain the mostly those commands that we discussed and few additional commands. Okay, so there are a few advanced commands. For example, I can give you a brief uh, two three minutes overview for those uh, for those commands that we have not discussed. But yeah, that kind that can be used in your project and that that you can already uh, that you can go through whenever you have time and whenever you want. So the reason I'm not going into demo of these commands in detail because things will get more confusing for you guys. Okay, so. So yeah, for now, uh, for basics, that is fine. That we have, which the things which we have discussed is fine. Okay. So uh, we discuss about pull, right? We know what is a Git pull. So whenever we want to pull, we when we why do we a pull? Why do we do a pull? We do a pull when we want to fetch from our remote repository to our local repository. Correct. That's what we do. So here, if you see this uh, slide, here is my you can see my uh, PPT, right? Guys, you can see my PPT. Uh, my uh, PowerPoint slide is visible. Yes, we can see. Okay. So we discussed on distributed version control. What used to happen? We used to have a sent a remote repository. Okay. That we, we call it GitHub or GitLab or whatever. Okay. And we had something called local repository. These local repositories reside in our workstations on our personal laptops. Okay. So whenever we want to take the updates from the remote repository to our local repository, we do a pull. Okay, so whatever the changes there were done on my, what are the latest things that are being done in my remote repository that I have not updated on my local repository that I can update using git pull. Okay, so pull will, what will pull do? Pull will do a merge as well. Okay, so let's say your commit, your repository was in, uh, uh, had some files that were up old. Okay, they were old. But in the parallel, might be few days back, some of the other developer might have committed and might have pushed some additional changes to this report, rem uh, this remote repository. So this means your remote repository is a bit forward than your local repository. Correct. So what you want to do, you want to pull, you want to make your local repository latest, which is in line with the remote repository. Okay, so that whatever changes this uh, person two did, you also in your local repository, you also have those changes. Okay, so for that we do a pull. So if we do a pull, what happens? It does a merge as well. Pull is a combination of pulling all those changes that were that additional changes that were there, plus merging it in your repo. That will include both. And there is something called fetch. Okay, git fetch. Git fetch also brings uh, that the latest changes to your local repo, but it will not merge. Okay. It will just bring it to your work, working directory. 
okay then you can do it manually then you can uh, do what uh, on the changes on top of that and you can merge it to your uh, local repo okay got this difference git pull and git fetch guys yes no Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Fine with it, right? Uh, what is the difference between so these are basically asked in your interview. These are this is a, a very normal interview question. What is the difference between git pull and git fetch? Okay, pulling and fetching both are doing the same thing. Both are bringing the latest changes from your remote repo to your local repo. Okay, but what pulling is doing? Pulling is actually merging those changes and committing it to your local repo. Okay, but fetching is just bringing the changes to your local repo. It is not committing it. It is not. It is just fetching it. It is not merging and committing. Okay, merging and committing you can do manually. Okay, so this was one of the interview questions that people ask you. Another is uh, that I'll leave it up to you to go through. There is a there is something called rebase. Okay, rebase and merge. Okay, so merge we already saw yesterday, right? What is merging? Merging is like uh, merging two branches. Like there might be some changes in branch B. Which needs to be brought in branch A. So we do a merge. So that's what we do when what we were doing yesterday. So we had some uh, branch B created, and we were merging all the changes from branch B into our master. Okay, for that we have the merge command. So for merging, merging purpose we have we we have a merge command. Okay, we have this merge command already. But there is a command called rebase. That is also a command. So the difference between rebase and merge is also one of the interview questions that is asked. Okay, what is the difference? So when you merge it, it keeps your commit history. Whatever commit history you were having, it keep it preserves it. For example, let's say you were working on a development. Okay, you were working on a development, and you were still working on the development. You took a branch from the master. Okay, and you are start working on a development. You developing a feature. You do. It took around uh, seven days. Let's say you plan around seven days for developing that feature. Okay. So what happened parallelly in on the second day only, uh, another developer pushed one commit to the remote repo to your to master branch. Okay. So what will happen? Your personal branch is now has less changes. Like it is one step behind the master branch. Correct? Because Another guy pushed some changes to uh, the master. So what you will do? You will do a either you can do a merge, or either you you can do a rebase. Okay. What rebase will do? Rebase will rewrite the commit history. It will not bring the that exactly commit that ex the exact commit history. It will rewrite the commit history. You can rewrite it. Okay. That that is something advanced. The this rebase is something advanced. So I'm not going into very detail. I'm just giving you a hint, just an overview, so that. Uh, you when you read it, it becomes clear. Okay, so git git fetch and git pull is clear, and git merge and git rebase. So git fetch and git pull both are doing the same thing. They both are bringing your changes from the remote repo to your local repo, and git merge and git rebase are also doing the same thing. They both are merging two branches. Okay, but there is a slight difference between those. These two. So merging is safe because it preserves your commit history. Whenever you want to revert, you can exactly revert to your previous commit. But in rebase, you actually are changing your commit history. Okay, that is a bit dangerous. Mer uh, rebase is a bit dangerous. Okay, but it has its own advantage. Okay. Okay. These these are the four things. And the fifth thing is, uh, fifth thing is a uh, squash. Okay, there is a command called git squash. Okay, what you do in squash? Squash means what does squash means? Squash means uh, squashing things, like bringing things, uh, compressing things. Correct. Squash means that, right? So that's what it actually does. So let's say in a development, uh, uh, there were a bug. There was a bug raised in a the project. There was a bug which was raised. Okay, for fixing that bug, uh, a person, a developer, created a branch from the master. We know that, right? We we will not do anything in the master. We will not push all the commits directly on the master. Correct. I'll show you the brand, branching strategy, then it will be more clear. So what we do? We have multiple branches in our projects. It's not like we have a master branch and everyone does commit in the master branch only. It's not like that. 
so whatever things are coming in the project people are creating branches let's say uh, let's say uh, for example uh, take an example of amazon let's say we are developing a website we are developing an amazon website okay so there are multiple people working on that amazon website development okay so we will distribute the task obviously so that is what best thing about devops right we can easily distribute the task so let's say person a we have a base code and initially we start with the base code and person a is responsible for developing a payments page person b is responsible for developing cart page person c is responsible for developing orders page okay so they will create their separate branches they will not create a master branch and then uh, on the master branch they are merging every day they are committing every day it's not it will not like that they will create their own branches work on their particular development person a will work on orders page person b will work on payment page person c will work on items page and after their individual modules are complete they will push the changes to the master they will commit their changes after testing after their testing they will commit their changes to the master okay that's what happens in the happens in the real world project okay <clears throat> so let's say for a development let's say uh, for this uh, for orders page just take an example of for orders development that what person a was doing he create he changed multiple files he created a java file he changed edited something in the python file he created something in the html or css file okay six seven commits he did now he want when he wants to merge all those changes to the master when he is merging it in the master what will happen it will see he will see all the commit history in the master correct when he gets when his changes gets merged in the master the master will have all the commit history let's say he committed six things he committed one java file he committed one python file he committed one html file he committed one css file okay so all these files he committed and he pushed and he merged it to the master and when after he pushed in merged everything in the master what will the commit history in master look like it will have six commits the six commits he he, he did the master will have uh, along with the previous commits it will have all the six commits okay similarly developer b also working on the payments page let's say he also does 20 commits he commits seven uh, eight java files he commits few sql files multiple things he is doing okay then after he merges to the master what will happen the master branch will come in initial commits plus six commits from uh, developer a plus 20 commits from developer b so this is not this will bring a lot of commit history in the master correct lot of commit ids lot many things in the commit id so what we do in squash what we do we squash all those changes done by developer a into a single commit okay the six files which he changed java file css file html file whatever file six files he changed we squash that into a single commit okay the changes will be there all those changes in seven files will be there but they will be squashed into a single commit and that particular commit will be merged with the master okay now and similarly for developer b developer b did 20 commits and with squash when we squash these 20 commits all these 20 commits changes will be represented by a single commit okay and that commit will be sent to the master so now instead of 30 40 commits in the master branch we will see just few commits like initial commits plus one commit by developer a and one commit by developer b sorry uh, this squashing happens locally on the local repository hmm yes correct okay. this squashing happens on the local repository okay it happens on the local repository and just you, you just push it to the remote repository okay so you can assume it same remote repository and local repository you can assume same it happens on the repository just imagine it can it this happens on a repository this is question this these are these concepts are uh, beyond any repository like merge pull rebase these come these uh, the things which i am telling you those do not depend on they, these these uh, uh, principles do not depend on local repository or remote repository okay these thing are actually do, you can do these things among the repo, like in the this uh, uh, in the repository like push and fetch is, it's obvious push and fetch you will do with the it's a syncing between remote repo and local repo correct 
similar rebase and merge Re rebase and merge you can do in your local repository correct you can have multiple branches in your local repository and and the concept of merge applies in both correct rebase and merge is actually merging two branches and two your two branches can be in your local repository and your two branches can be in your remote repository as well so merging and rebase concept is applied in both okay then squashing what you're talking about squashing is uh, squashing is actually applied on rem local repository only because you are actually working on local repository only right developer a when is working on orders page or developer b working on the payment space they have they have created they're doing the changes in their laptop they are working on their local repository only right and they have 26 uh, changes they have done six commits developer b and has done 20 commits so so they will squash all those 20 commits and six commits into one commit and they will commit to the master branch and that master branch will be for the remote rep local repository okay and now my local rep repository master branch has all those commits and now again push it to the remote repository okay got it yeah, yeah. don't confuse between the repositories right now okay don't confuse between the repositories so these are just the concepts okay just understand why they are what what are these concepts pull and fetch are for syncing two repositories correct merge and rebase is for merging two branches okay squash is for squashing the commits like 20 commits into a single commit just to get a clean just to get a clean commit history okay got it and there is something called cherry pick okay these are some advanced thing i'm just telling you in brief like when you later uh, implement actually in this these things in your project and you're working on then you can go through it okay these are not a part of basic uh, git labels but yeah cherry pick and these things are advanced what happens in cherry pick like you can have uh, like for example you have uh, like for example i took developer b did something on the payment space he was working on the payment space now he has 20 commits in his payment page okay but he wants only uh, seven commits from these 20 commits to be pushed to the master okay what he will do he can cherry pick those commits okay he can cherry pick those commits and only those commits he can push it to the master we can merge it to the master okay these are very clear with the name only okay these are very even the names are very descriptive fetch pull squash cherry pick merge commit add so these are all these git commands are very obvious by the names okay i know it will be difficult for you to remember right now but i'm i want to just to focus on the concepts okay don't worry about actual commands how they are commands you can always refer even in project you can when you are running any uh, working on when you encounter any issue with the command you can always google it git command to merge two branches so you will get a git command but I want you to focus on the concept. Why do we need a merge? What happens during the merge? What, what is the commit history? What are branches? What is the difference between fetch? When do we do a fetch? When do we do a pull? What is a rebase? What is cherry pick? Okay. What is fetch? So all these things, these are the concepts actually. Okay. Got it clear? Got it guys? Yes, no? Yes, we did, yes, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, right. Any doubts? Yeah. Any, any doubts? I think we are good at that now. It is for me. Yeah. Okay. So what we'll do today? So we'll continue from yesterday. So uh, uh, I'll, I'll show you something. Let me know when you are able to see my uh, Chrome. You can see my Chrome. Uh, which screen can you see? Because sometimes with Zoom, it becomes confusing which screen I'm sharing. <laughs> can you see my uh, Chrome browser? Like, yeah, yeah. Okay. The cursor, we can see the cursor. The pull request. Uh, okay. File okay. to. Yeah. yeah, fine. Then it's fine. Then it's fine. So this was my GitHub repo. Okay, what I told you earlier, 
like in my second session okay this was my github profile okay i have that day i created one repo right i created a test one repo that day i created a test one repo you guys remember shayan prakash we created a github account and then we created a repo here test one then we sent this repo to our local repo and then we were doing a good git push origin git push origin master and then whatever uh, changes you we were doing that were pushed to my master yeah okay you remember it right yeah yeah hmm. so for raj raj you can go through our second lecture second lecture was uh, mainly on that only so we created a github account a github account is nothing but your the remote repo we were talking about okay the remote repo we are talking about that is our github that has all the repositories repositories Understood. are nothing but the storage okay Sorry. that day we created test one repo that day we created test one repo so it has the same thing it when we created it we had a master branch okay and i told you what master is the default branch when we create any repo so master is the default branch that we get even when we were doing things on the local repo we we used to have a master branch only right initially we used to have a master master branch only whenever we were uh, create initiating git we were did create an it and these things so a master branch got created so yesterday what we saw we were creating an additional branch from here okay we were addition creating an additional branch okay so i'll tell you what is uh, okay so re just a revision for that concept okay i am sharing my putty screen let me know when you see my putty Can you see my putty screen? Yeah. Hmm. So. So, how to check the branch? How many branches we have? Get branch. Okay. So we had two branches. One is master, and there was a new branch that we created. My new branch. Okay. So. Now, if you want to. so yeah we have already synced our local repo with our remote repo in our first lecture right so whatever i had in the master so if i see ls hyphen lstr these changes right now are are in my local branch okay local branch and what is the command i need to do to i push it to the master git push origin master okay i want to push git i want to push all those local changes to origin branch origin origin what is origin origin is my remote repo okay i want to push all the changes from my local master to my origin master so this is the command so right now see what what did you see in uh, there in your uh, Uh, local repo you have three files branch one file file two dot txt first file dot txt okay now see now what will i do i'll push when i do a push all these changes so all these changes will be pushed to my master branch see i do a git push origin master it is asking for my username for the github so this was my email id sorry guys okay and i need a password i showed you that day right how to generate a password how to generate a pat token so go through that how to generate a pat token okay so here we enter a password the pat token we generated that day what is that it is getting uh, failed to push uh, some references to mm, i think there is a clash which is going on indicate the remote changes i think my branches uh, are not updated for now that's why it is giving an error updates are rejected because the tip of your current branch is behind its remote counterpart yeah so you playing around with yesterday so it created some uh, conflicts 
So uh, let's push our master plan. Let's put push our changes from the my our new branch that we created yesterday. Okay. So if I go to Git branch, it shows me two branches. Correct, master branch and new branch. Okay. So but here in my uh, remote repo, what do I see? I see only master. I do not see any other branch. So what I want to do? I want to push my the new branch that I created yesterday to this remote repo. Okay, what will I do? I'll do a git push origin name of a branch. Name of a branch is my new branch. Git push git the, like pushing all the changes to my origin. Like origin is my master branch. From which branch? From my new branch. So this is the command. When you push, when you want to uh, push all the changes from a master to your uh, your uh, remote repo, what will you do? You do git push origin master. Like the default syntax is git push origin name of the branch. Okay. So I'll do this. It is asking for again my uh, ID. Okay, password again. I'll put my uh, pad token. See, it is giving me username for Git is asking me, then the enumerated objects, whatever created a pull request to. We'll see what is a pull request. But yeah, see, now if I show you my uh, remote repo, can you see my remote repo? Can you see my Chrome? So here, if you see, now I have a master and I have my new branch here. Okay, so I have pushed my changes. Like I pushed my the complete branch, my new branch, which I had in my local repo to my remote repo. Okay, if I open this, if I go to this branch, see, it is having all these files. It is having first file, uh, hello, my new branch, whatever, my branch file, all these files it is having. <laughs> Okay, now it's in sync totally. So now we have two branches here. Got it? So this thing I'm repeating because this we have already covered in our first session. How to push uh, your local repository branch to a mass to your remote repo rem remote repository branch. Okay, this is how we do. Okay. This clear? Raj, this is fine for you. Yes, 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 yeah. I'm understanding. Okay. okay. So now what we'll see. Yeah. So uh, when we were discussing about Git, yeah, when we were discussing about Git, we saw that in your distributed version control, what used to happen? You can you have versioning at both sides. You have versioning at the local side, local repo, and you have versioning at the remote repo. Okay. So this means whatever I did till now on my local repo, the same things, exactly same things I can do it in my remote repo. Correct. The, like the new branches, which I was creating, I was creating new branches, right? I created my new branch yesterday in my local repo and I posted it to my remote repo. I was merging two branches. I was doing resolving conflicts. I was committing changes. I was doing many things on my local repo and I pushing all, I was pushing all these changes to my remote repo, but the same things I can do on my remote repo as well. Okay, exactly the same things I can do in my remote repo as well. On the remote repo, I can also come uh, create a new branch. I can uh, create another branch and merge these two branches. Okay, resolve conflicts. All those things I can do on my remote branches as well. Remote branch as well. Uh, sorry, remote uh, remote repo as well. Okay, I'll show you how we how we do it. But the difference is only difference is on local repo. What do you do it? You use commands. Okay, we used to have git rebase, git merge, and git uh, add, git fetch, those all commands. But on your remote repo, remote repo is what? Remote repo is the GitHub. That is that the that Chrome browser which I showed you, the web page which I showed you. This is my GitHub account. Okay, this is actually my remote repo, which I had synced with my local repo. Okay. So here it is all GUI based. It's all GUI based. You have all the options. And you can do, you can create a branch from here. Let me show you how to do that. Okay. Let's say I have two branches 
for now. Okay, I want let's create another branch. I'll create a uh, this is how we create a branch. Go to here. In this, in this, find or create a branch. Let's name our branches August branch, something like that. Okay, and it says create branch August branch August branch from master. Okay, it, you can choose from which branch you want to create another branch. Okay, so let's say I'm creating this. So see, it created, now I have three branches, master branch, August branch, my new branch. So August branch has been created from my new branch. Got it? So this is how we can create multiple branches. And when I create a branch, the place from my, where I create a branch, it will have all the things that the original branch had, like the parent branch had. So for August branch, my parent branch was my new branch. Correct. So all the changes that I did in my new branch, like all the commit history will come to August branch. Similar to the thing that we did yesterday, we created a my new branch from master. Correct. So my new branch had all the commit history that the master had. Okay. Similar to similar to this, today we created an August branch. And now my August branch has the same commit history as my new branch is having. Okay. And you can delete a branch as well. Okay. And you can create, delete and do whatever you think with your branch. How to delete a branch? You go to view all branches. Okay. Here you can delete the branch. You can delete this branch. Okay. Delete this branch. Okay. So I deleted both the branches which are there. Again, I go to the code. See, again, I have only master. Okay. Those two branches I deleted. Got it? Got it, guys? So this is all GUI stuff. This is like what it's very clear from here. So if I, let's say I want to create another branch. Let's say I creating a first branch, something like that. So it says uh, first branch. So I, it says create branch, first branch in the master. So let's create it. So now I have two branches, master and a first branch that is created from the master. You can see my Git, GitHub page, right? Like uh, the screen, you can see it, right? I hope I'm, I hope, I hope I'm not on my putty screen right now. It becomes confusing sometimes here. Yeah. yeah, we can see the Chrome. Okay, you can see our Chrome, right? Okay, fine. So, yeah. So we created a first branch from master branch. And our first branch is having all the same files that a master branch had. Okay, let's see. In, a, in my master branch, I had three files, branch one file, file two, and file one, file first. Okay, and in first branch, since I created from master, this is also having all these three files. Okay, now I can create additional files in my first branch. What I'll do, I'll add a file, create a new file. Okay, I can name a file. I can call it uh, hello.txt. Okay, name it whatever you want. I can uh, write here, hello from branch one, whatever. Okay. See this, I am here. I am doing everything GUI. There, I was doing everything with the commands. Like that was all the Linux commands that I was using there. So I'll commit new file. So I don't have to here. I don't have to uh, add and commit and those things. I can just do it with the GUI only. Okay. See. Uh, now this hello text dot txt hello hello dot txt got created. If I if I want to see what are the changes, it says hello from branch one. Okay, and I can see all the everything like it's also it's it's also version controlled, correct? I told you versioning can be there in my local repository as well, local repo level as well, and it can be at the remote level as well. So here also it sees last commit this, and I can check the history. Then one contributor who committed it, it was me. Okay, so here also versioning is updated. So if if I want to edit this file, let's say, let's say I edit this file. Okay, I write a 
a new line added okay again i'm doing a commit see now it added now now my latest file is hello from ramon branch a new line added as well if i say history if i see the history it will have it will see the history this was the first commit committed one minute ago it was a commit it was committed uh, just now okay i can see all all of these things okay so this is totally gui you can play around with it whenever you want okay now let's say i want to merge it to the master now this was the uh, this uh, file to dot uh, txt was the sorry hello dot txt was a file which i created in my first branch and i want to merge this uh, first branch with the master what will i do so there what i used to do on git on local repo what i used to do i use i used to do a git merge command okay i used to use a git merge command but here what i'll do i'll create a pull request okay i'll create a pull request here pull request is what pull request is for merging only okay i'll do a pull request okay so i'll do a new pull request okay new pull request what will have it will say see the arrow mark so here i can select from which branch to base branch so i want to merge i want i'll select my branch here okay so my pull request i'll i'll read it as all the changes like i'm going to merge my first branch to my master okay how, this is how i read how i can read it like all the changes from the first branch will be merged with the master so it is able to merge because there is no conflict right now okay and you can see and you can see the difference so here there is nothing on the master i don't have anything correct so this is what the how the pull request looks like so i'll go and create pull request okay my now pull request shows everything it says that uh, it says that okay my base branch is the master and i want to send all the changes from the merge all the changes from the first branch to master okay it says able to merge because there is no conflict these branches can be automatically merged there is no issue we don't have to do anything manually manual intervention will come when there is actually a conflict i'll show you how this how to resolve the conflict sir okay so i do i can write a comment okay uh a pull request from first branch to master whatever okay i'll do a create pull request see what it is doing it is checking for available so this uh, branch has no conflict with the branch base branch okay Be why no conflict because my master branch does not have anything as like hello.txt hello.txt i created in, in the new branch which i created in the first branch i created in that i created a file hello.txt but this hello.txt is not in the master right now so it is not giving me any conflicts so i'll do a merge pull request okay so it it is asking for a confirm confirming merge i'll do a confirm merge okay so it says pull request successfully merged and closed now see my branches let's go to the my branches now let's see if this thing has appeared in the master branch or not now see this hello.txt has appeared in my master branch okay if i go to my first branch i should see hello.txt right here is i created hello.txt and i merged when i did a pull request all the changes that were there in my first branch were moved to my master branch now my master branch is also in sync with this clear this clear it is exactly the same thing that we did yesterday on git on, on our local repo now we are doing the same thing in our on our remote repo correct got it guys yeah, yeah. Hmm? so now let's let's uh, create a conflict okay let's say i am editing something in my on this hello.txt branch in my master okay i am in master right now let's edit some things i'll instead of hello i'll put hi okay and i will add some line let's say uh bye at the top okay 
so this is a thing the changes i am committing in the master branch okay these are changes i am committing in the master branch so my master branch file looks like this by high from high from branch one a new line added okay these three lines are there in my master branch hello.txt now let's see and now this content will obviously not be showing in my uh, feature branch no in my first branch correct because i have not done the changes in that i have done the changes in the master branch so let's see first branch so my first branch is still the hello.txt looks like this hello from branch one and new line added there's two lines okay now let's say i edit this as well okay let's say i edit this as well here i do what i do i write okay uh, how are you whatever and i commit these changes this changes i am committing in my first branch hello.txt okay so this is how my hello.txt in my first branch looks like okay four lines and this is how my master branch hello.txt looks like only three lines starting from by okay now i want to raise a pull request so this will obviously create a conflict correct if i raise a pull request if i raise a go and raise a pull request that means new pull request okay and here i say select first branch so this means i am i am uh, pushing all the changes from the first branch to my master branch correct whatever changes i am i did on my uh, first branch and committing to the master branch okay so that will that is bound to create some conflicts correct so why is it showing able to monitor to show conflict actually uh, if i do master here if i do Uh, okay let's do commit some commits again i think it should it is not showing conflict i don't know why <clears throat> so uh, i had this hello.txt let's let's add a few lines here it should i am i am replicating an instance where i see a conflict mm, yes no okay now let's go to the pull request new pull request pull request from first branch to the master oh, why is it saying able to merge why is it easily resolving it so here you can select actually from which branch to which branch okay arrow signifies that only so you are raising the pull request from your master to first branch or first branch to master you can do whatever so we usually normally uh, pull do a pull request from our feature branch to the master branch like from our child branch to the master branch okay so that's why okay so let's see let's see creating a pull request what happens okay so here i do a create pull request it says it is able to merge uh, let's figure out why it is not giving on it okay so i'll create a pull request uh, this branch has no conflict with the base branch why is it saying this conflict this branch has no conflict with the base branch okay so if i merge my pull request uh, so it is actually uh merging it and let's see the code from my master in my master what i have ah, i did not create a conflict see it merged everything all the things that were there in my 
uh, feature branch it got merged to the master but it is not uh, giving a conflict let's figure out why it is not giving a conflict it should give a conflict actually uh, so let's add add something here i'm just replicating a case where uh, where you get conflicts okay Do commit on this branch. Then I'll raise a pull request, new pull request. I'll raise a pull request from my feed first branch to my master branch. Yeah, now it's it's creating conflict now. See, so I did some changes again in my in my first branch. Now it is saying cannot automatically merge. So automatic merge would have been okay if there was no conflict. That's why we saw green tick here, right? We saw something green. Okay, now it's saying that cannot automatically merge because there is a conflict. Because first of all, when do we see a conflict? When we have the, the file name is same. So here, this condition is satisfied. My file name is same. Hello.txt is in my uh, master branch also and my hello.txt is my is in my first branch also. Okay, plus on the same line, there are something extra. Some additional things are there in, in the same line. So, Lee, so let's see what are the things. So it's saying, so when we used to do it uh, from in, in, a, in our local repository, what we used to do, we used to manually resolve the conflicts, right? We used to edit the file manually doing VI editor and, and uh, whatever you want to delete, we used to delete and, uh, and used to commit the latest file. So here we'll do the same thing. Okay. Again, I do a create pull request. It says create pull request. I can create a pull request, but here, see, it will show this branch has conflicts that must be resolved. Okay, now you will get a GUI where you can resolve the conflicts. Okay, I go to resolve conflicts. So here, see everything it is showing, whatever, it's, whatever the changes. Now, someone who has developed, who is a developer, actually is the best person to know what are the things he wants to keep. Okay, so I can do whatever I want here. I can just uh, remove these things and I want to keep, let's say, only uh, these changes. Okay, I'll say market is resolved. And I'll commit the merge. Okay, so this, so it says continuous. Uh, so it says this branch has now this branch has no conflict with the base branch because I have already resolved the conflict. Now I can merge the pull request. Same procedure. Okay, see now if I go to the code, if I check hello.txt, you will see whatever I merged. Like after resolving the conflict, what is the latest situation here? I can see that. Okay, and in the history also, you can see the complete history. Okay, got it guys? This is clear, merging conflicts and these things is clear? Guys, clear? Yes, yes sir. So getting the concepts, right? So you can just uh, go through this. You can play around with this. There are a lot, lot many things you can play around here. Okay, just create a repo and uh, okay, and just play around with it. Like I'll show you what a cloning is also. Okay, there is something called clone. Okay, let's I let's say I have another repository. I can have multiple repositories, right? Let's say I have I was we were working on test one repo just now. Okay, so I let's say I have multiple repository. I have Spring demo repository or hello world repository or whatever. Let's say I want to clone this repo in my local repo. Okay. Let's say there is a uh, repository in your uh, organization and you want to start working on it. How will you start? You will open this repo. Okay. You will get the its link URL, the URL of the repo. You will copy it. Okay. And then you will go to your putty. Like in your local repo, you will go. Okay, in your local repo, you will go. You can see your putty screen. Seeing my putty screen. Guys. Yes, yeah. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm cloning. I'm cloning uh, that spring demo repo to my local repo. Okay, what I'll do? 
this my repo was replicating my test one i this my repo is linked to my into my test one repo that we were working on few minutes back so let's say i want to start working on another repo what will i do let's say i want to I, i'll create a new folder for it mkdir uh, some whatever you want new repo okay new repo just name it just create a separate directory for just for easy uh, for recognizing purpose okay i'll create a new repo directory i'll go inside this directory and is there is nothing right now so here what i'll do i'll clone that repo so the command is git clone and the repo name repo url let's it so if i do this so see it cloned the repo and now if i do ls hyphen latr see it is it it created the repo exactly with the same name which i had in my github in my remote repo okay this is how i bring my remote repo to my local repo okay then there is cd i go into this folder if i do ls minus altr so here i see this whatever things were there in my spring demo repo dot git dot git because it is version now because this is version obviously and this is a readme file okay i can do a cat readme it is not coming uh, cat see this is the same file a demo project which i am seeing okay got it how to clone it so this was all about git commands okay so we covered many 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 git commands so uh you can have a look whenever you want again and revise it practice so this will this commands all will all will come with practice there are so many git commands and uh -huh. so the idea of the session was just to give you concepts okay the concepts of repository course concepts of version control what are the commands that we can have how to sync my local repo with my remote repo how to uh, create a new branch okay so that part is clear right guys clear yeah any doubts any confusions there okay so one more topic topic i wanted to uh, touch upon because uh, like you guys are experienced right uh, 10 plus of high plus years 10 plus years of experience so uh, these are things that you should know actually branching strategies what are the branching strategies we use in organization so branching strategies we you have an idea of branching right how we create branches and what is a commit history okay that thing is clear i assume based on my past sessions past sessions which i have taken okay so we know that we can have multiple branches right so today also we created new branch we are working on the master branch we were using commits and pushing the changes from the uh, remote branch to the local branch to the remote branch and those things we are doing today so we have and we have branches so when in organization it it is very important to understand what are the branching strategies we can follow okay because by default we get a master branch we have seen that you know even in our local repo even in our remote repo we'll have one branch called the master and it is never advisable to do everything on the master branch okay it's not advisable that everyone should start working in uh, doing the commits on the master branch for example i took an example of this amazon website right someone a developer is working on uh payment space another developer is working on Uh, order space other developer is working on item space other developer is working on any other page so what happens when they are doing in the master everything in the master so in 20 days there will be 100 to 100 so commit in my master and very in very irregular basis okay let's say on day one there is a developer who commits his first day changes about the orders okay next day uh, a developer b commits something related to the payments okay next day again uh, developer c commits something about the uh, orders okay then the same day 
there is a commit for the payments again so see how how complex it becomes to understand the master right now there are so many commit ids and it becomes very difficult to test even even to test correct because there are multiple commit ids in the same branch so that's why organizations follow a branching strategy okay what from for they follow a branching strategy what to do is uh, just forget about hot fix in the release branches for now okay just un understand initially we have a master branch okay so the round circles that you see are the commits these are the, just assume them they are the commits okay you guys are there understanding because this is something important it might be a bit complex so i want you to pay attention to this because this is like uh, if you are experienced then this is important even for the interviews this, if they are uh, talking about git this is 100% sure they, they are going to ask about branching strategies you follow in your project okay so branching strategy can be customized like it does, it's not like it's a standard that okay this is the branching strategy and every organization should follow this branching strategy no it's not like that okay so every organization can have their own run, branching strategy okay they can use uh, some uh, 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 good this uh, best practices so there are some best practices branching strategy and there are they can customize it anyways they can customize it okay depends on the project okay total branching strategy depends on the project so our interviewer might ask you what are the branching strategies you follow in your projects okay so what we do so this is one of the branching strategy the popular one which i am going to tell you okay so uh let's say i'll take an example for now okay just it's like a story you can say so here i have a master branch initially okay so we know that right whenever we create a repo there is a first branch that's create that's get created by default that is our master branch okay then it's it is as i said it is not recommended to do anything in the master like it's not like we are developing changes and developing the things and committing every day in the master it's not recommended so for whatever tasks we have we create a development branch okay we always do the things in the development branch okay let's let's take an example of uh, amazon website okay that the example we were taking okay so from the master branch we'll create a branch called development branch in our example development branch would be creating amazon website okay that would be a development branch okay so for that we can have many features correct a web amazon website will have many features as i as we are talking in example it will have a payments page it will have a orders page it will have items page it will have your uh, profile page okay it will have a cart page it can have many 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 uh, features correct so what we do in organization usually usually it's not like that only there is a single developer right every all the tasks we are giving to a single developer and he is start work starts working on it it's not like that so we have multiple developers in the team correct we have multiple developers in the team and we assign individual features to those individual developers okay let's say a developer one developer a gets to develop orders page developer b gets to develop payments page developer c gets to develop cart page okay so what will they do they will create their feature branches feature branches are specific to that feature only okay so they will create a feature branch from the development branch only okay so from the master branch we create a development branch and from the development branch we can create multiple feature branches okay let's say developer a uh, on day 1 developer a created a feature branch for orders he starts working on it okay he did three four commits in the coming two three days he did some commits on the second day developer b comes in and he creates a branch for payments page okay he creates a branch on, for the payments page and he took out the branch from development branch from the development branch he created a branch called payments payments page for the payments feature and he started doing commits in that okay now assume 5 days passed after 5 days uh, what is happening uh, developer a is doing his changes in his working on the feature branch a developing developer b is working on his feature branch for payments 
and next after five days developer C comes in and he takes uh, and he starts working on that and he again uh, and now what he does okay so after five days let's say after five days developer A who was working on the feature or who was working on the orders page had something reasonable had developed something reasonable and he wants to commit those changes to the development branch okay whatever changes he did for the orders orders page he committed those he merged those changes with the development branch okay so my development branch will have everything that was having earlier plus the orders module that my developer a designed correct he merged it okay now on the sixth day developer c who was working on the payments he also did some change did all the changes in the last six days and he also merged it to the master obviously there will be conflicts he'll be seeing because developer a has merged it before him and he will i'm assuming that he's resolving all the conflicts all the conflicts he's resolving it manually and again his changes he is merging to the master to so to the developer to the development branch he's merging it so now my development branch is having all the changes for the orders and the payments correct now say let's say after seven days, after seven days developer C comes in and he has to work on cart page. Okay, he has to work on cart page. And now what he will do? He will not. He will take the branch from the development development branch, which already has the changes for orders and payments. Okay, now he will cut out a branch. He will create a branch from the development branch. And now for feature C for developer C. The new branch that he's creating for feature C, that is the cart, he is making some changes in that, in his particular branch, in his uh, module C, in his uh, in his uh, cart module, he is making all the changes, and then again he commits to that level development branch. Okay, so after six seven days, after uh, another three days, I have in this development branch all these things like uh, our orders page, card page, and the payments page. Okay, this means my all the features are developed. Okay, so my development branch has all those things. Okay, got it? Got this concept of development branch and feature branch? Why do we need these two branches? Hmm? Or any confusion? Guys, this point is yes, I can understand. Understanding it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Other guys, who was this? I I forgot. I I cannot recognize your voice. Who was this? Raj here. Okay, Raj. Yeah, Shah and Prakash. Yeah, yeah. Are you there? Not feeling sleepy, right? Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What time no is it sleeping. there? No, what no, nobody's sleeping here. What time is it there? What time is it there? Ten o'clock. Oh, it's ten o'clock in the morning, right? Okay. So this means you have already had a good sleep. Okay. So this is clear. From the master, we took out a development branch, and from the development branch, we created multiple feature branches. Okay, various people are working on the feature branches. Developer A is working on feature A, developer B is working on feature C, developer C is working on feature C. And after their completion of the features, after testing their features, they are merging the code to the development branch only. Okay, so after, after a considerable amount of time, let's say after 15 days, uh, all these things, uh, the order space, the cart page and the payment space have been tested on the development branch. They have been committed to the development branch. And now we have to release those changes. Okay, I have to release those changes. So for that, I'll create a release branch. So you know what releases, right? You might be, you are working in the IT industry, you know what is a release, right? So for every, after 15, 20, or after n number of days, we, we, we release something. And that release is based on various features. In that release, there are various features that we release. Okay, so, a release a release branch will be created from my development branch 
So after all these three features that were a part of a release, they were merged into the development branch. I created a new branch from the development branch. Okay. I created a release branch from them from it. Let's say release one 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 dot zero. Okay. Release one dot zero. This release one dot zero will have orders page, cart page, and the payments page. All these things it will have. Okay. So this is the concept of release branch. Why do we have a release branch? Okay. Then there is something called a hotfix branch. Hotfix branch means <clears throat> hotfix branch. What does hotfix branch mean? Hotfix branch means that there are uh, there is production also running parallelly. Correct. There is something is running already in the production. Like the users are coming in and uh, the web page Amazon website is already running. Let's say. Okay. And these features were just for some additional things on those payments card and uh, those modules. Okay. Now what happens? The things which are running on existing production, they might also have some issues. Correct. That's why we have operations team. Correct. They identify like what are the changes, uh, what are the issues that the customer is facing. Okay. What there, there might be some configuration changes and uh, uh, some code changes identified as well in the production. So for that we do a hot fix. Right. You must be aware of the word hot fix. So hot fix actually skips the part of develop like. We do hot fixes like a quick fix, correct? It's not like we will go through the complete procedure of uh, like uh, uh, creating a hot fix branch, like creating a it merging into a development branch and creating a feature branch and then testing it because hot fix are very quick things. We have SLA for everything in the industry that this particular thing has to be fixed in four hours, that this particular thing has to be fixed in one day. So that's why we have SLAs. Okay, so hot fix are quick fixes that we do. It might be some configuration fixes. It might be some small, small code, code changes. Okay. So we have a hotfix branch. So hotfix branch is taken from the master branch only because the master branch is my ultimate branch. Okay. My master is, is, is my God branch. You can say, okay. My production has the copy of the master only because master is, is, is always, a, it's like the current working production copy. Okay. So, what I'll do, I'll create a branch from the, I'll create a hotfix branch. Let's say hotfix 1.0 from my master branch, make some changes and again merge it to the master. So my master branch has the fix for the hotfix, the issue that the customer is facing, the configuration issue or small code change. Now I have merged that change to the master and have deployed it to the production. Now my production is running fine because there was SLA for a single day, correct? In a single day, I created a hotfix branch. I did the configuration change and I committed the and I merged that change into a master and I posted it to the production and then production is perfectly running now. So now I have my hotfix branch, but I have other branches as well, correct? I have develop, development branch, feature branches, so many branches again. So I want to quick fix, I want to implement this hotfix branch into my development branch also. Correct. So that I don't want, I don't want to miss this feature. Correct. Because this was the hotfix that was identified in the production. And I, I want, I don't want to forget this. For example, someone is all, all uh, development branches already created and it might happen. Correct. We had a, a quick fix in the production and people might forget this thing that, okay, this was a small fix. So people might forget. So for that, what we do, the hotfix branch fix that we did, we will merge that fix into our dev development branch only. Okay. We'll merge that fix in our development branch. Okay. And now my development branch is having that fix. Okay. So now whatever branches are getting created from the development after that, that let's say a feature six comes features, uh, four comes in. Okay. Let's say it was for user details or user profile page, something like that. Okay. So I'll create a branch from my master, uh, from my development. And that development, that feature feature four, that is my profile page, will have everything. Will have a cart quick fix it. Will have the cart uh, module. Will have the payments module. Will have the orders module, and also it will have the hot fix that was fixed in the production. Okay, so that is my feature four. Let's say this comprises my feature four. I have a separate branch for it. I did my changes for feature four. I created everything related to the uh, customer profile and XYZ things and those things. 
and i and i again uh, merge those and i again merge that feature with the master so to the development branch okay that feature c feature 4 which i was developing related to profile user profile customer profile so i merge that feature to my development branch again okay then again from development branch after 15 days i'll create another release okay i'll create another release now my release which i am creating release 2.0 let's say so release 2.0 will have everything till release like 1.0 plus this hotfix plus the feature for that created everything it will have okay okay later after release is working after release is also perfectly working we have tested it properly we have done all sorts of testing unit testing integration testing and all the testings we have done we finally merge everything to our master branch because master branch is our god branch right everything has to be latest there so after we merge it to the master branch we can deploy it in production because now we know that we have all the features running and all the releases have been tested after two releases i have to deploy it to production so i'll merge i from the release branch i'll merge that release branch to my master branch and all the changes to the master branch i can deploy it to production okay and this process may repeat it may continue let's say again after few days there is a hotfix there is another issue coming in the production i again do, i again create a hotfix branch for it okay and quick i do a quick fix and i merge it that things to the master and deploy it into the production okay parallel let's say there is another website coming in another additional feature or another uh, development branch coming in or new features are coming in so that this thing keep on repeating okay got the strategy clear guys raj prakash shah clear Yes, Puneet. Yeah. Any confusion on this? You can ask. Like any, if any confusion, like you can ask. No, I think I think I'm okay with this. Yeah. This is clear, right? It's very straightforward and very logical and very easy to answer in the interview. Okay, and this is important mm -hmm. when you are working as a uh, architect or working as an experienced person. So in this project, in the project, you should know like strategies, like branching strategy. so this is very ideal strategy which i am telling you that you can adapt in any of your organization like any project you can and uh, adapt this strategy okay you can you should you should take a note of this remember it any every time okay and there can be always a few additional things that your product pro project might require and you can always go and customize it you can have like you can uh, there are projects which do not have a hot fix branch okay those projects do not have something called slas like they might be very SLAs might not be very strict, so they can go through everything. They they have time to create, ah, uh, do fix those things via development. So what will they do if they are not creating hot fix runs? They will create a feature. They will create a feature run for that uh, uh, fix. Okay, they will develop that feature and they will merge it to development branch. They will create a release branch and they will from the release branch it will, it will come to the master branch. Okay, so it can be customized. So what I told you, it's a it's a good practice this branching strategy this i told you it's a good practice you can take a note of it any time okay clear so i guess you might be now comfortable with uh, branches how do they work come on get commands okay just go through all these uh, things so we covered we finished get so we concluded the get get stuff today okay clear so you you can you can also give me feedback like if uh, my way of uh, making you understand understand is not good and you want something else you can always uh, tell me whenever you want okay maybe i'm not clear because it's like uh, sometimes it it happens that i am understanding and i am understanding a topic so when i'm making you guys understand it it sometimes becomes uh, out of sync out of sync understand like 
I already know this. I already know this topic. So when I am explaining it, I explain it like all I already know it. So there might be some some things which I might miss, or uh, I might not explain in a much descriptive way. So you can always tell me to repeat the things or to explain it properly or to explain it. Multi I, I can repeat multiple times. No, no issue on that. So clear. But yeah, that, that's fine. Source code management, branching strategy, Git, GitHub, staging area, working area, all the Git commands. Okay, so that is clear, right? So our next topic would be Jenkins. Okay, so we'll start with the introduction of uh, Jenkins first. Just give me a second. <clears throat> so we saw version control okay version control is is my first step towards ci cd first steps towards devops version control is, a, is my first step i should have a code right i should have a code i should have a repository i should have all those things where developers are coming and writing their code and committing their code i should have something like that so my version control and source code management solved all those issues now what happens? Uh, let me open my paint window. Why am I not able to share my paint window? Share screen. Yeah, I can see that. Can you see my uh, paint window? Okay, so here, uh, what used to happen? So we'll discuss about continuous integration. Okay, first we'll study the problem and then a solution. Okay, what used to happen? I used to have, after version control, I used to have my repository here. Okay. And my developer used to work on this repo. Okay. I had multiple developers. Let's say this is my developer one. Okay. This is my developer B. This is my developer C. I have multiple developers working on it. So what used to happen? My developers are pushing their code, pushing my code to here, pushing their code to, to my repo. Okay, they're pushing their code to the repo. <clears throat> now, before continuous integration, what used to happen? When they push the code, now they have multiple files. They have written multiple files. Okay, they have multiple files in the here. I have multiple files, multiple code files, multiple Java files, multiple Python files. I have all the code. So after uh, the development used to take a lot of time, correct? Development is not a one day task. Like for example, the Amazon website, I told an example of, it's not like that I'll complete everything in a single day. It used to take uh, six months, seven months, five months, three months, a long time. So what used to happen after writing all the code, every code was written, all the code was written. There is to be an integration. Okay. There has to be an integration of everything. That code has to be integrated. What is happen in integration? All these part of the code has to be compiled and integrated. Correct. So there has to be something called integration. So all these code has to be compiled and written, and there used to be other uh, a code which would which would be a total of these code. Let's say this code has fifty lines. This could have thousand lines, two thousand lines. This in total, I have like 50,000 lines there. Okay, this particular code after integration became 50,000 lines of code. So now after this code, what happens? My, my, my coding is done. Okay, now this code comes to my to my tester. My tester has to work on this. My tester has to, has to test this code. So he used to use various tools. 
Selenia or whatever XYZ tools to test it and those things. Now, testing also takes time. So it took around six months for these developer guys to develop the code and uh, five, six days to integrate this code, do a single piece of code. Okay, and now the developers have started working on some other project. These three developers have started working on some other project, let's say. Okay, now this tester person has starting testing the original code. Like the starting code they were in, they initially worked upon. My tester guy is testing it. So my tester guy has 50,000 lines of code to test. Now he finds some issues. He said, he goes to the developer and says, dude, you have done the coding incorrectly. There are a lot of issues I'm facing. Please fix it. So now developer have already started working on some other project. They're engaged in that, that project now. And they have actually forgot like what were the codes they did in the past six months and those things. So now it becomes very difficult, right? Because testing happened after six months. The developers came to know about the issues in their code after six months, like the unit test they might be doing already, but the integration testing my, which my tester was doing, he pointed out the issue after six months. So it's, it's not practical for them, for the developers who are working on now other project and to come back and uh, uh, change their mindset of working in a different, in a previous project again, it becomes hectic, right? So this used to happen before continuous integration. Okay, now with continuous integration, what what the things, uh, what happened? So continu continuous integration came to a rescue. Okay, so continuous integration came to a rescue. So now what used to happen? So again, you have uh, developers working. Again, you have multiple developers working here. Okay. Source code will seem, remain the same. You have this uh, repo here and you will have this uh, repo thing here as well. So people are actually uh, committing those changes in the repo. Whatever changes they are doing, they are committing in the local repo. No, sorry, this is a remote repo only. I assume that it is a remote repo I'm talking about. Okay, they are uh, doing those changes in the remote repo. They have created, uh, mm, they have started working on it. Okay. For the first week, let's say, for the first two, three days, they created 50, 50 lines of code. Uh, then again, uh, 50 lines of, uh, 20 lines of code. This developer B dot create, created. And then again, 10 lines of code, my developer C created. Okay. In the first two, two, three days. Okay. Now what happens? Now I don't have to wait for six months to start the testing. As soon as these guys commit the code, as soon as I, these guys commit the code, these there is a server called continuous integration server. Okay, there is a server called CI server. There is a server called continuous integration server. What this does is, as soon as this developer A commits the code, or these guys commit a code, the CI server, there is something running on the CI server that takes their code. Okay. That takes all the code, integrates it. Okay. And tests it. And if they're an issue, reports to them. Okay. This part of the code is not good. Please fix it. Okay. What are the things that CI server does? It builds all the code. Okay. It builds all the code. Build as in you have multiple codes, you integrate it. Okay. Integrate this code, build up a particular jar or exec any executable. And then what you do? This is a building phase, let's say. Building the code. Then what it will do? Testing the code. And deploying the code. Okay. So this is what CI CDs, this is what a pipeline, this is a CI, I wrote CI, but 
you can assume it's a, something like a why is it not coming okay i'll write here you can see my paint screen right okay so what happens my developer a does a does any job does a work, uh, does a commit okay what happens with that commit with that 50 lines of code the code gets built okay a jar is generated it gets tested it get deployed on test environment okay and then whatever issues are there it is being reported to my developer okay so whatever changes whatever issues uh, being faced so it is reported to the developer only okay it goes to the develop developer only what what are the what are the issues they are coming so it's it's continuous so after 50 lines of code again right b this person b does any code changes after 20 50 lines of code he commits it that triggers something and again after that 50, uh, 20 50 lines of code there is a build happening that is tested and deployed and again if there are issues they are sent to the developer so it is continuous now i don't have to wait for 6 months for the whole program to come whole code to complete and then do the testing and and then uh, uh, see what are the issues it's coming so here developer is already working on that developer is already working on that he is not working on any other project and uh, so that he will shift his he have to shift shift his mind to work on this project and those things so as soon as he commits as soon as he commits something in the repo there is something called a ci cd pipeline that triggers and that would do a build test and deploy and whatever if there are any issues which are coming in it is reported to the developer he fixes it he fixes it again he commits it again there is a ci cd run again this happens so this is a continuous process so that is why it's called continuous integration and continuous deployment or delivery got this concept guys got the issue got the problem and the solution raj shah prakash yes punit yeah yeah clear right this is clear right yeah any doubts no i mean all this concept you know we have to again uh, go through it again to make them you know absolutely clear at instance you will feel like yeah, yeah i'm understanding it but unless until make go back to it i'm not sure 100% how we will be able to yes obviously you have to revise there is no and that is no that that is non negotiable thing <laughs> you have to That's obviously true. revise all those things because the things you are uh, the important thing for you is just understand the things in the class okay if you are not understanding sure. then you can point it to me okay then you can tell me sure. i'll repeat it i'll make the things clear right away okay then again it's it totally depends on you afterwards then when you are going to revise it and it it happens with everyone like even there are few things that i i work on it personally and then after 10 days i forget it if i do not revise okay. so we will have this ppts right i mean like yes, yes. yeah yeah i'll push all these ppts to the link i'll give you the links of these ppts oh that's great thanks mm. so so yeah that is the thing we discussed just now can you see my ppt right now or which page i am sharing Okay, I'm sharing my Jenkins video only, right? Okay. So here, this is the what we think. What is continuous integration? This is what we discuss about continuous integration only, right? So developer commits the code to the shared repository on regular basis. Okay, as we discuss, like fifty fifty lines of code or whatever logical commits he is doing, he is committing on regular basis. Okay. Then there is a version control system. We already know version control system is being monitored. Okay. When the build is detected. a build will be triggered automatically if the build is not green developers will be notified immediately this is what continuous integration is we are not talking about continuous deployment or delivery right now okay we are talking about continuous integration only so here developer is committing the code to github which is my remote repo github is a website web based hosting service or software for development project so github we already know what it is right so developer commits his code and there is something called a ci server 
there are very there can be various servers various ai uh, servers one is jenkins other examples are team city bamboo there are many things available in the market but jenkins is very popular because it's free it's a, it's an open source okay whenever developers commit a code okay you commit a code to the github and there is something automation happening automation as in your jenkins come to know comes to know your jenkins your server is linked to this uh, github repo there is a trigger so whenever person commits it a build is triggered automatically this is all automatic okay build is triggered what does the build do it will build all the code okay it will build all the code run some unit test on it and if there is an issue then the build mean build is failed and your developer is notified okay again he commits a code so this is a continuous process okay so this is a continuous process now your project does not have to wait for 6 months to do, do this process it's not like he is writing 50000 lines of code and then uh, a test is run and then he comes to know that is very irrelevant right in the current scenario so every so that's why you continuous integration is taking over everything these days okay so whatever that's why devops is taking over everything these days okay so why do we need continuous integration so the advantage is it detects problems or bugs as early as possible in the development life cycle that we already discussed okay since the entire code code base is integrated built and tested constantly the potential bugs and errors are caught earlier in the life cycle which results in a better quality of code so this gives you a better quality of code okay because the things are getting integrated right developer if he develops a feature one his feature one it tested and he gets a report that okay is working fine then uh, then he develops feature 2 and the developer develops feature 2 and feature 3 again it is developed and it's it is integrated with feature a as well now all my three features are working in sync this pipeline this jenkins ci server will check will test everything correct so it will check whether everything is working fine or not so if there is an issue it will also check the integration issue let's say we have committed feature a and feature b and it is working fine and after 5 15 days developer c commits feature c Oh, okay again there will be uh, a commit trigger this build will be triggered it will be integrated now feature c will be integrated with feature a and b and it will be there will be integration testing okay now it will be checked whether feature c is running perfectly fine with feature a or not feature a and b or not if there is an issue so here we can detect early that okay my feature c is also working if it is not working my developers are there to fix it and they are already working on these features so it is very fast and it gives you a better quality of code and very quick it's very fast got the concept okay here it shows this diagram so here if you see these kind of diagrams you must have seen this so here you have a delivery team delivery team are the developers okay delivery team are the developers they check in your code they check in their code in the version control okay they check in their code to the version control and this triggers your ci process this is this is a total ci process okay this is whole this this is complete ci process which i am telling you okay so what happens your developer uh, checks in a code into the version control means into the git repository this triggers a build and the unit test this builds all the this this step builds this code and does a unit test if it is not working red means it is not working perfectly okay it is not working fine if it is if the build is failing he gets a feedback okay he gets a feedback that the build is not that the build is, is not working correctly and it is having an error so he fixes it he fixes it and again does a change he commits it to the repo to his github repo which again triggers a build so now this time he has fixed it now it is green the build and unit test is green now after the build and unit test is passed there is a another phase of testing automated accept acceptance tests we do okay if these automated acceptance test is failing that means it is red so again he gets a feedback okay you have this error this issue in your code that this automated acceptance test is failing again he does a check in he fixes his code and he again does a checking uh, check in okay then that which again triggers a build and unit test 
now this time after built in unit test pass successfully it again triggers a uh, automated acceptance test my automated acceptance tests are working fine this time and now after automated acceptance test i have a something called manual approval okay this is just an example i'm telling you just an example that you might see in your organizations okay after automated acceptance tests are working then you have a, we have a unit we have a user uat testing right there is some uh, set of the users who are testing your features okay after this approval this uh, thing is goes to the user acceptance testing phase okay after the user acceptance testing phase it goes to the release phase okay in every phase in every phase you are getting a feedback your developer is getting a feedback in every phase it's not like that he is getting everything is getting passed and after that after late he is getting a feedback so this uh, with this feedback he is able to know that whether his changes are working fine or not what issues are getting what issues were faced in build stage what issues were faced in automated acceptance stage and he is he is committing it he is change making the change and committing it clear this is clear right this this is very easy i guess hmm clear yeah prakash shah raj yeah any it's clear any comments on this no 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 for me okay just say yes or no yeah i know <laughs> else i might also sleep <laughs> if you if you guys are not saying yes or no <laughs> okay so this is what the thing is this is what happens okay so jenkins is one of the ci things ci tool okay so this is what a ci is continuous integration what this is what ci is okay so we have as we discussed there are multiple tools available in the market so there is jenkins there is team city there is bamboo so out of this jenkins is very popular because it's an open source it's very popular so jenkins is an open source project written in java it's written in java only okay and it works on port 8080 we'll see that in the next session we next week okay we where we'll see the demo it always works on port 8080 okay it is a ui based you will see i'll show you the how it ui looks and i i guess you might have seen jenkins you have seen jenkins ui in things in your project hmm in your project or anywhere have you seen jenkins how is how its ui looks like and you must have seen this oh, this guy no. this particular guy no i never saw this one yeah. no not seen okay okay so these things will be new for you but yeah it's fine it's easy not difficult not difficult so it's step by step we'll go through and it will be very easy just focus on the concepts and uh, the demo we'll do uh, next weekend okay so what is jenkins jenkins is an open source project written in java okay so this is what we saw here all these things jenkins does it okay so jenkins automate the entire software development life cycle it can automate like whatever we discussed like uh, we saw that ring right the devops ring that we saw the infinite symbol that we had all the phases it had plan deploy test code and uh, everything everything so my jenkins does everything it can automate my entire software development life cycle that is why it is very important okay so the project name uh, was hudson so, so the jenkins was actually developed by it was initially called hudson okay but it was later named by it was later named as jenkins okay because oracle bought it from uh, sun microsystem so this was just a history not important okay important thing about jenkins it, it, it can run on any platform it is a so, just, just imagine it's a software okay it's a java based java, it's a software written in java okay and it can run on any platform it can run on windows it can run on linux it can run on ubuntu it can run on anywhere it can run anywhere without any compatibility issues the it's jenkins is very popular because it is open source correct and whatever is open source you have a community you have many people many people using that 
okay which makes it very easy for people to edit the source code and uh, give some changes okay whatever the bugs and these things people can the whole community fixes it so that's why it makes it very popular so that's why jenkins is very popular okay so because of uh, ci integration bugs will be reported fast and get re rectified fast so that the entire software development cycle software development happens fast so that we already saw okay this this thing we already saw so what happens it's a, just a diagram which will show you is it visible so what happens you have a developer okay you have a developer and he pushes the code in github so this is a cat logo you see uh, for github so you know the history of this uh, icon this cat icon so if i show you here something interesting there is a history for this also <laughs> for this logo also you see github why github if you see so github logo looks like this can you see my screen this cat can you see the cat so github logo looks like this actually so why there is a history behind it as well so when there uh, uh, what initially they did was uh, so we know that we have various branches in git the git work the basic concept of git, git is based on branches you can have many branches from the master you can create this branch from this branch to this branch you can have multiple branches so that's why initially what they did they created a octopus so initially they created a octopus the, their initial logo was octopus but since because octopus has eight legs correct so eight legs signifies signifies various branches but octopus was already a logo of something else it was i guess uh, patented by something else so they instead of octopus head they put a logo of the head of the cat <laughs> so this is called cactopus i i call i think they call it cat catcopus something like that so see this cat has so many legs so this is the history of this uh, git logo okay so for every devops tool you have a particular logo so see for jenkins also they have this logo of of a servant okay that's what a servant does right servant does uh, your tasks it can you tell the servant to do this he will do it so that's what jenkins done, does actually okay so how, we'll see how uh, jenkins in, is integrated with various tools so what we do so you have a developer developer pushes a code into your github okay he pushes the code in the github and that triggers a build this jenkins gets triggered jenkins is a slave like it's a servant it's a servant you can assume it does all the task you tell him to do this it will do this so it's assume jenkins like this so whenever uh, the developer pushes a commits a code in the repository the jenkins task get triggered triggers okay in jenkins will orchestrate everything now what will it do it will take the code from this repo it will build it for building you have something called maven okay i'm just giving a brief it, it will cover everything in detail but i'm just giving you a brief okay so your jenkins what will do it will uh, trigger maven build what maven build will do with the, with all the code that is extracted from the this remote repo all the java code all, all the python code maven builds that code okay what do you mean by building building means compiling the code compiling as in your uh, uh machine your operating system cannot understand your machine cannot understand uh this language right java code that you what you are writing it cannot understand so you have to uh compile it you have to compile it compiling 
will create a jar file correct when you compile a code it gets when you build a code there is a jar after building a code there is a package there is a jar file that get, gets built like you can have multiple uh, jar file or a war file you must have all the heard all those things okay there is a package there is a package gets created with all the code so maven does that maven builds the code whatever code was there in my repo maven builds the code okay so this maven is also triggered by jenkins only so this is all the pipeline this is the complete pipeline your jenkins takes the changes from your repo whatever code is there in your repo and it triggers a maven build maven build will build the code okay and you have something called selenium you must have heard the term heard this tool selenium selenium does the testing so this is also orchestrated by jenkins okay after the code is built the jenkins will call the selenium task so it will does all the testing okay it will do all the testing then there, there is a tool sonar cube or there are tools available in the market that do the quality analysis we'll check the quality of a code okay so we'll see one of the code quality checks so code quality checks can be you write a code you have some coding standards correct like in your java code you have a definite way of writing a variable okay uh, uh so th these are code quality these are all code quality okay so there is a there are tools for checking your code quality as well whether the quality of a code is good or not so so this is what happens in ci this is what happens in continuous integration now what is continuous integration continuous integration is when a developer commits a code in the github means in your uh, source code management in github you have jenkins the ci server which is like your servant it does all the orchestration now okay it will fetch the code from the repo it will trigger a maven build what will maven build do maven build will build a jar file or whatever it will build it can build a var file or a jar jar file it is just compiling it is just compiling a code and it is creating a jar file or a var file or any executable you can say okay and again what then after the after the build is done jenkins will can run a code quality check okay it can run a code quality check before also and afterwards also not an issue it you can customize it whatever so when he sees when jenkins sees the code when the when jenkins commits uh, sorry when when a developer commits the code in the uh, repo in his remote repo jenkins will get triggered okay it will uh, do the code quality analysis if the code is working if the code has passed the quality checks okay then it will uh, trigger a maven build the code will be built and then it will take us it will trigger testing the code will be tested okay so this is called continuous integration so this happened continuously continuously means when whenever developer any developer commits this code this thing happens every time it's not like that like after 60 days or after 6 months it is happening so every day whenever he gets a commit when he gives a commit your jenkins starts acting starts his job whatever part of the commit he made everything is getting integrated and it is all the code quality checks are run then the build is created it is tested now this happened this ci cd ci is done continuous integration is done Your your code is continuously integrated. Like he commits fifty fifty lines of code, then twenty lines of code, then thirty lines of code, then sixty lines of code. So every time, the code is integrated using this. So this is called continuous integration. Okay. Then after that it comes, CD, continuous deploy or continuous delivery. I already told you what is the difference between continuous delivery and continuous deployment. Okay. In the first lecture that we covered in lot of detail. so for continuous deployment it's automated automated as in after ci after the ci happens your uh, build is done your code is tested and everything so in case of deployment what happens everything is deployed on production directly without your intervention so whenever come customer uh, your developer commits a code build is happening code quality checks are running testing is done and, and it's deployed on production 
so that is what continuous deployment but continuous delivery is you do not deploy that code in the production you deploy that code in any lower environment a pre prod environment a uat environment or test environment you deploy the code there and after a manual approval or you have button or you have another trigger that would deploy your code to the production okay so that was delivery okay got it so everything everything is done by jenkins only see deployment or delivery is also done by jenkins so that's why i said jenkins can help you throughout your software development life cycle from starting of your when a user commits his code to the repo till everything is deployed on production everything all the stages in there in that can be done by jenkins you can create a pipeline for it that's what a pipeline is correct pipeline is a task number of tasks that are ordered that are logical okay you can assume like a pipeline to be like uh, for example uh, how do we create a car like let's say a car manufacturing company so there is a assembly process assembly line correct one uh, first first your uh, a chassis is created then engine is created okay then steering wheel then tires so it happens one by one okay and after that and those particular things are also checked it's not like that every after a car is built total and then it is checked it's not like that your steering wheel when it is built it is checked for all those standards and everything when your when your engine is being built your engine is being checked with all the standards if it is running fine if it is working fine then if your chassis is uh, created so your chassis is created that also is checked whether it is uh, strong whether it has uh, it is perfectly colored and all the all these things whatever but and all these are tested after that these are integrated correct after that these things are integrated to create a car okay and that happens in assembly line it's not like that it's not like that your car is created after 6 months and then your testing starts testing is going on continuously okay that is what continuous testing is all about okay and after your car gets created there is a final testing of a car and then your car is ready to be delivered so that is what continuous delivery or deployment is okay got it got it guys any confusion in this this clear right what jenkins is doing raj shah prakash as per it yeah any confusion not much not for me mm -hmm. okay so this is what ci cd is i give an example of car as well just just for you to remember like it just in case you forget what is ci and cd because the difference between ci and cd uh, difference between cd and deployment and de delivery this is important and in an interview people might ask you this question okay so this is what to jenkins does jenkins can do everything starting from your uh, code built by the team and post to the repo starting from that to delivery of your to deployment of your application okay everything jenkins can do okay so why it is opera we already discussed it is very easy to use okay it is it has great extensibility and it can support uh, uh various version control system like uh we we have studied git git only right for the version control so there are multiple version controls av available in the market you have mercurial you have svn you have so many things so git is so this jenkins can be integrated with many version control systems okay code quality matrices so it has we can integrate with the code quality checks that we talked about okay sonar cube and these things we'll see in detail what is sonar cube and how it gets integrated with jenkins okay so it can do all the code quality checks code quality checks in for every language there is a code quality check correct 
we have a particular indentation like okay we have a bracket here and then it is ending with a another bracket it has to be aligned the name of the variable should be proper okay so all these are code quality checks so we can integrate various code quality checks with jenkins as well you have build notifiers build notifiers as in as as we told right as i told that for every uh, stage you have feedbacks given to the team if this fails your team sees your feedback okay this has failed please fix it if automation testing fails your delivery team receives a feedback that okay this was a use case and this it it has failed here please fix this issue okay so we have notifications very well integrated with jenkins okay ui customization you can always customize the jenkins ui and so many things okay it has lot of plugins available you can write your own plugin and you can use community plugin so we'll see what is a plugin we'll see what is a plugin plugin is nothing but you know jenkins in, is integrating with so many things right it is integrating with this build is in uh, jenkins is integrating with your repository like github repository it is integrating with maven it is integrated with selenium it is integrated with sonar Sol cube it is integrated with so many other things it is in because it is doing all the pipelines correct so it is integrated integrated with so many things so so that is why you have plugins for everything so you install all these plugins on jenkins and do all the customizations okay you have plugin for git you have plugin for svn you have plugin for maven you have plugin for selenium you have plugin for sonar cube you have plugin for kubernetes you have plugin for aws even you have plugin for terraform you have plugin for everything for everything you have plugins in jenkins so whenever you want to integrate a thing with jenkins just install that plugin plugin into jenkins and do configurations on that for that plugin okay and it will it will fix it it will it will get integrated with jenkins and you can start using it it's so easy okay it's not a free tool sorry it's 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 a free tool sorry it's a free tool it's a free software it's it's not just a tool it's a framework you can do whatever you want all you need all you need is just a plugins so that we talked about plugins are very important part of jenkins okay so we can attach uh, slaves to the jenkins master it instructs uh, other slaves to do the job if the slaves are not available in jenkins itself it can create labels it can so this is like Ma jenkins works on a master slave concept okay you have a master for example when you do not when you create jenkins you have a single master okay when you install jenkins you have a single master and whatever tasks you are giving to jenkins like i told you right it has jenkins is like a servant so whatever tasks you are giving to jenkins jenkins is doing that okay so uh so what happens it it works on master slave whenever you install jenkins first you are when you initially let's say you have not created any slave so all the tasks are supplied to the master you master does all the tasks but you can create various slaves okay you can create various slaves for those for that master slaves are also jenkins jobs slaves are also there are servers small part of that server that can handle your other tasks let's say there is a master and you create three slaves okay so the tasks which are coming in these tasks will be will be equally divided among various slaves okay and if these slaves are not available the task will be done by master very simple as that okay another thing about jenkins is can do schedule tasks you can schedule tasks with jenkins okay like similar to thing similar to the cron what we put in put in linux you put a cron job right that okay this particular job this particular script has to run after every 30 minutes or this has to run after 10 days or it has to the has to run every 12 pm at the night so this is a cron thing that you cron is a thing what you have in uh jenkins right uh just give me a second
yeah sorry so this is clear and same with jenkins you can schedule your task like you have jenkins jobs i'll show you what are jobs and just assume that it will be a task so you can schedule that task to do every to run every 5 minutes like whatever customize you want customization you want to do you want to do the task every 12 pm at the night or every 12 am in the morning or uh, uh every 10 days so you can schedule a task got it clear guys what is jenkins how is it popular why is it what do we do in jenkins hmm then you have uh something called master slave architecture that we already discussed right you have a jenkins master and you have various slaves you have various slaves so what will master do master will schedule build jobs okay dispatch build to slaves for the actual job execution okay monitor the slaves and record the build results and can also execute build jobs directly and would, what would slave do slave will execute build jobs dispatched by the master that's it so whatever jobs are coming to the master so master will distribute them among, among the slaves okay will distribute them among, among the slaves okay and uh and it can monitor what the slave is doing what the slave is doing so it is a head ma head slave you can say jenkins is our servant okay and inside bit and under this servant you have slaves okay these slaves are reporting to your servant okay and your servant is actually distributing the task among these slaves okay it's very simple but master slave architecture is a bit uh, complex thing we'll see that if if the time permits we'll uh, study that but it's just a concept okay slaves are nothing these are also the there are these are also some machines these are also some machines for example let's say you can you have like uh, a task which you want that only this particular slave is doing slave you can put a tag on the slave that okay this is a slave xyz and you have a task which you want only slave xyz to be doing so you can tell your master that okay this particular task has to be done by xyz slave so that task that type of task which is coming in will always be sent to xyz slave only so you can do that as well okay got it guys so this was the jenkins basics why do we need jenkins what is it what is it what is how how it does all, all the orchestration so it is for automating everything like it automates everything everything it automates and again it gives you like various flexibilities like even if you don't want the things to be automated you can do that as well like you can have a, some manual intervention okay let's say after building uh uh you want something manual okay after i click yes only then the testing should start you can do that as well it's very flexible it's very customizable very flexible very easy to understand okay and it is very popular like in you cannot imagine a software development with without jenkins these days it's like that without jenkins or any other c uh, ci tool like bamboo or team city so everywhere 100% times you will be using it you will be seeing it everywhere mostly jenkins only okay got it any questions any confusions guys clear raj cha prakash i am here yeah this is raj here yeah yeah cha prakash clear got these things got these concepts hello ha uh, yeah, yeah yes very clear doubts any doubts <laughs> any questions no so for no question you just want to move into the uh, Huh? the you know the we will get more idea like once we move into the practical part of it you know when we okay know. but this concept is clear right so concepts and this concept right is clear now. yeah yeah okay what is jenkins doing why do we need a continuous integration okay yeah git git must be clear right git uh, so i would ask you to do a hands on proper hands on on git okay yeah. so you have 5 days monday tuesday wednesday we we'll meet on next saturday and i want mm -hmm. you guys to master git in those in these 5 days at least do all the demos and look at my videos the recordings and yeah. do all those things on git because do you have any uh, labs like you know uh, like you know 
say like you know some uh, some uh, tutors provide some labs right like you know uh, labs uh, it will be same exactly the same that's same. what uh, yeah that i mean yeah uh, we can yeah hmm. we can practice what you're showing but you know like you know, yeah you can practice at least so, like, you know, so labs would also yeah, be the same yeah labs would also be the same <laughs> uh, those hmm. commands you have to practice that's it yeah okay just play around with it Create okay, a remote sure. repo, clone clone that remote repo into the local repo. Create one branch in remote repo. Create one branch in local repo. Try to sync mm -hmm. between those branches. Okay, create some files. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So like that, you know, there. do you have anything written down in a, in a word or a, you know something? For uh, us no, I don't have anything written written now. Step by I'll, step. I'll I'll share that thing. Okay, I'll uh, share that thing today or tomorrow. Okay, okay. I'll find a lab. But at least uh, with that session, which I did, if you, if you do, because I did the, what I did uh, in the demos, I uh, did all these things in a, in a story kind of way. Okay. Yes. That was very sequential. Mm -hmm. Okay. What the commands I was creating, I was did first thing in the master, then I created another branch. So that was, that would be same thing in the lab only. Okay. So okay. you can practice that. You can start practicing all the commands. So uh, in Git, the thing is, there are so many commands. Okay. And you have to remember those commands. That's it. Mm -hmm. It's not like you have to remember. So you we search. just need to know the important ones, isn't it? I mean, at least correct. the minimum ones. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Important, important ones. Important ones are, imp the, oh, I have covered only important ones only, right? The, the okay. commands like create, co cover, commit, merge, add, resolving conflicts and creating branches. And those things are very basic. Some advanced, which I discussed yesterday, like rebase, rebase and fetch okay these things there are many yeah. many other git commands there are many git has a lot of commands mm -hmm. okay so i have given you cheat sheet as well so you can google it as well so you will find n number of git cheat sheets there are posters mm -hmm. available that you can put it on your <laughs> table and so git is very popular git is very popular tool yeah okay. and it 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 only requires practice that's it it only requires practice so this this will happen with every DevOps tool. So whatever DevOps tool we are covering, all these tools will require some practice. Okay. And that's why it requires more input from your side. I'll I'll give you all the demos and all the sessions, but if you do not do the hands-on, like it's a waste of your time and money totally. Mm. Okay. Because DevOps is all hundred percent hands-on. It's hundred percent hands on. That's why you see the theory part. We'll covering. We are covered not in. We are not covering in too much detail. Like I'm giving you the overview of everything. And most of the, on Git also we did like eighty percent demo. We did all those commands. We did all the all the real time. I did not prepare slide for all the all those commands for Git rebase for Git commit and Git uh, revert and Git fetch. I did not prepare separate slides for them. I just showed them with proper demo. Okay. So yeah. that's what we'll do in our complete session, in our whole DevOps session, all the DevOps session. Now things are things are very easy. Created. These are not very difficult. Things will become a bit complex when we go into Jenkins a bit in detail uh, and uh, Docker, Kubernetes. Then there were things really complex. Because here you see, we did not get any errors. Errors were very, very minimal errors we saw. Mm -hmm. But when you go and create, start creating build Jenkins build, there will be a lot of errors you might be facing. Yeah. Okay. Even today, I when I work on Jenkins, it's like even I face a lot of errors. So for that, you have Google. So Jenkins is like you will find many things on Google. Many things. You search that error, you find it and fix it. Okay, that's what DevOps is. DevOps is more about using Google. How you use Google, because there are thousand errors you might be facing, and on the and on the next day you can come up across with a, a next error you might have never seen that. Okay, then again, you have to Google it. Okay. Okay, guys. Then we can close the session today. So we covered a lot of things today and just I'm relying on you to uh, get a revision of those things and do hands-on. Okay, that will help yeah, you sure. in the next sessions. Can okay. you also share the course course content? Like, you know, in the first class, you do you have that PDF file? You... Yeah, I have the PDF file. That, okay, I'll share yeah. that in a, in that. Uh, there. Maybe in the chat. Group. In the chat, in, the, in that yeah. WhatsApp group. 
Okay. So we know, like, you know, where we are going. You know? So I, now we know, I, I can't remember the whole course content now. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can also prepare ahead with it. So that makes it easy mm. for myself. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. I'll, I'll ping that file there. Okay. Thank you. Very much. Okay. Okay, then. Thank you, guys. Have a nice week ahead. Tomorrow's a holiday, right? Yeah, for you guys or not? No, we are not on holiday. Oh, okay. That's are you, are you on holiday tomorrow? No, tomorrow is 15th of August, right? Independence Day. So. Oh, okay. I think 75 <laughs> years now. Isn't it? 75 years, yeah. So, mm. yeah, it's, it's good that after a long time, I guess, we had this 50, 15th of August on falling on Monday. <laughs> yeah. So, there, every time it used to be on Saturday, Sunday, or any other holiday. So, <laughs> yeah. so this time we so have long, it on. long weekend, isn't it? Hmm? Yeah, we had long weekend. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Mm, even on Thursday, we had a holiday. Friday for... it started, right? So, so Friday, yeah. Yeah, on Thursday also we had uh, the Raksha Bandhan holiday. Right? Okay. <laughs> so, in, you are in UK, right? You guys are in UK, all of you? Yeah, mm. I am in UK. Yeah. The is in UK. Yeah. Raj also, Raj, you are, and you are in? I mean UK, yeah. Oh, you are also in all three of you are in UK. Okay, in the same in the same project in the same you are uh, in the same project or in the same team? No, not exactly. Uh, I don't know about Shah because I haven't uh, spoken to him. I never met him, so I know. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, I th I thought you guys are like working in the same project or working in the same company. No, no. I mean, um, we have actually taken some class from. Uh, they budget in a few almost like a year back uh, apart from that we don't have much of any collaboration with them yeah. ah okay 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 got it got it got it mm, nice okay guys yeah. let's meet on next Saturday same time sure. Sure. okay thank you guys thank you bye 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 bye, bye.